Hey there, Coffee Breakers. Welcome to another episode of Coffee Break. Let's give glory to the Lord for our time together, and let's coffee break. Hello, friends, and welcome back. How many of you are familiar with the story of Father Damien of Molokai? According to Wikipedia 2020, Damien was a Belgian Catholic priest who was a member of the Congregation of the Sacred Hearts of Jesus and Mary who died in Hawaii. Between 1873 and his death in 1889, Father Damien taught the Catholic faith to the people of Hawaii while also caring for those Hawaiians who had Hansen's disease, which is also known as leprosy. According to the article I was reading from Wikipedia, Father Damien cared for the patients in the leper colony for 11 years, meeting their physical, spiritual, and emotional needs before realizing he had contracted the disease after being scalded by hot water and feeling no pain. When Damien first arrived to the islands, he said this as, as the lepers, 816 of them at the time, were being presented to him by the local bishop. I will be a father to you who loves you so much that I do not hesitate to become one of you, to live and die with you. I make myself a leper with the lepers to gain all for Jesus Christ. While there are those who criticize Damien, such as Reverend Charles McEwen Hyde, a Presbyterian minister in Honolulu, who, according to Wikipedia, wrote to fellow pastor Reverend H.B. Gage of San Francisco. He wrote that Father Damien was a coarse, dirty man who contracted leprosy due to carelessness, who was being given credit for reforms that were made by the Board of Health. Gage, without consulting Hyde, published Hyde's letter in a San Francisco newspaper. According to the Wikipedia article, author Robert Louis Stevenson, whom many of us are familiar with, and one other 20th century man of peace came to Damien's defense. Stevenson wrote in response to Hyde's letter, If that world at all remembers you, on the day when Damien of Molokai shall be named a saint, it will be in virtue of one work, your letter to the Reverend H. B. Gage. The second defense came from Mahatma Gandhi, who was quoted in a 1965 publication as follows. The political and journalistic world can boast of very few heroes who compare with Father Damien of Molokai. The Catholic Church, on the contrary, counts by the thousands those who, after the example of Father Damien, have devoted themselves to the victims of leprosy. It is worthwhile to look for the sources of such heroism. That was 76 years following Damien's death. Gandhi also went on to state that Damien's work inspired his own social campaigns in India, leading to independence for his people and also securing aid for those who needed it, according to the same Wikipedia article. So, why am I mentioning the story of Father Damien? Because in light of recent reactions to the outbreak of the coronavirus, while I understand the need to be cautious, we also need to consider that there are neighbors, and again, we must remember that everyone is our neighbor out there who need help too. You can start if you have not done so already, if you are a person of faith, and pray. Not for yourself and your stock portfolio, but for those who have been affected by the virus and those in the medical field and beyond who are assisting those who are ill. Check with family members and neighbors in your neighborhood to make certain they are okay. Do they need anything? Can you help with anything? This is especially important for those neighbors who are elderly or shut in. While it is important, as I said previously, that we be cautious and proactive, fear should not be part of that equation. What we need today is a Damien-like spirit. While I am not advocating or suggesting that you walk among the lepers and become ill like the lepers, although I would gladly do so. 
I am asking you to look Satan in the eye and say with the courage of Jesus Christ behind you, I rebuke you, Satan, in the spirit of fear from my presence in the name of the Son of the living God. Say it until you mean it, which means you believe it. Then go out and help your neighbors. How about a few quotes to make your day a little brighter? Here is something that I believe may put all the recent coronavirus hoarding into context. Of course, I refer only to those who truly are hoarding and not to those who are merely stocking up as instructed. This comes from an article in US Catholic written by Alice Camille titled, Is Hoarding a Sin? A link to the article is on our website under the link stop tab. Toward the conclusion of the article, Camille writes the following which reminds me of a story a missionary from Haiti told me. Some families in Haiti eat only twice a week. Not twice a day, but twice a week. Like Wednesday and Sunday. And not just when there's a crisis. The poor in Haiti exist in perpetual crisis. Yet if you give to one of these perpetually hungry families a chicken so that they can at least enjoy one decent meal, they will immediately cut it in half and give the other half to their neighbor. Why? Because as they will tell you, the neighbor's family eats only twice a week too. Which brings me to share this final comment from her article. In this state of emergency, now more than ever, we need to be thinking of others as well as ourselves. Who needs a ride? A visit? A reassuring text? A chicken? 
I have 12 rolls of toilet paper. Am I prepared to share the wealth? Oh my goodness, I almost forgot again. Before we leave out today, please allow me to take a moment to wish my beautiful daughter, Christina, a happy belated birthday, which fell this past Sunday. Snow Princess, this one is for you. Well, that's it for today's show, my friends. I am really glad we had this time together. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave a comment below, and like this video. I also appreciate when you share Coffee Break with your friends and family. All are welcome to the best little coffee shop in America. I'll see you soon. One last thing, please remember to love God, serve your neighbor, help the poor, pray for those most in need of prayer. Be kind to yourself and especially to those who aren't always so kind to you. Love with all your heart, worship the Lord, and fellowship with your brothers and sisters whenever and wherever you get the opportunity to do so. To my brother, sister, Roman Catholics, please remember to pray your rosaries every day. Yes, it is that important. God bless our country. God bless you wherever you are, and may the Lord give answer to your prayers. Adios.